So we got a question from Chris about a meniscus tear surgery that he has coming up, and he knows that I've had surgery on both my right and my left knee. And so he asks in his question here on Instagram, he says, are you able to wrestle, practice heel hooks, and move well after the surgery, or is it tough? He asks because he has an upcoming surgery, and he's wondering about whether or not he's going to be able to do the things that he's doing now after the surgery. And again, I think that's kind of the big thing that we all worry about. I know for me, after my, my first meniscus surgery, I was terrified almost of, am I gonna be the same person? Am I gonna be able to train the same way? Or am I gonna be different, right? Because you're getting ready to have a doctor come in there and hack at your knee, you know, or you know, do a scope or whatever it might be. And again, are you gonna be the same? I think it's what most of us worry about, and if you're getting ready to have a meniscus tear surgery, I'm sure it's probably the same thing you're worried about. Now, I go in to kind of ask him, and it's kind of long, but I wanted to know because there's a telltale sign typically that a meniscus tear is brewing, and uh, I'll share what it is in a second, but I asked him, I was like, how did it happen? He says, well, it first started off with clicking in the knee, right? After the clicking, he kept training, right? Got progress to, to chase, then it turned into pain. After the pain, it turned into pain and stiffness, right? So it was getting stiffer in the pain. And then eventually one day he was picking up a kid at work, he works with kids that are autistic, and he put some pressure on his knee or something, and then it, it popped, right? And I've noticed this trend because my, my issue was very similar to yours, very eerily similar in the fact that I had some pain in my knee, right, when I first tore it. This is actually both of my knees, right? Both my, my one when I was a teenager and my one that I did when I was 29. So, because they were about 10 years apart, my left and my right. My right one came when I was 19. The uh, left one happened when I was 29. They both were sort of started with pain that started initially, right? And then things got better, so I ignored it. And then they would randomly get aggravated and there would be something just off. You could feel something was off. You couldn't quite put your finger on it, but something was off in my knee. But I just kept going anyway. And then eventually one day I would do something random, like my right knee, my coach, I was the UK, he moved my knee about six inches, very lightly, tore. And when I was 29 years old, I took a step back, literally just took a step back when I was doing a drill, tore, right? It's, it's like a, a rope that's falling apart and the thread is just unraveling where, you know, it just one by one by one, this thing falls apart and then one day, right, like with yours. Clicking, pain, stiffness and pain, and then one day, the pressure, and that's all she wrote, right? And this is the thing about our body. Sometimes our body fails us, but sometimes we fail our bodies because we don't listen to it, right? And in both of our situations, right, because mine had the same situation, but in your story, your body was telling you something. It was saying, hey, Chris, pop, 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 something's up. Didn't listen. Then it was like, hey, Chris, pain, something's hurt. I don't want to do this. This is hurting me. All right, your meniscus is talking to you. Kept going, turned into stiffness because it doesn't know what to do anymore. It's like throwing its hands up in the air. He's not listening to me up there. And then one day, boom, it finally tore. And you know, the thing about it is, is getting into the life after the meniscus tear, it really hasn't been that much different, right? Because I still wrestle, I lift weights, I can run, I can do, I can do everything that I did before. And honestly, I've, I've really not had that much of an issue. And again, this is, I had one 10 years ago, like when I was 19, so now it's like been 14 years, and the other one I had about four years ago. So really haven't had that much issues. Uh, I've been able to compete at a high level. Here's what's changed since the meniscus tear. I listen to my body because I'm forced to, right? It's literally, it's a wound that stayed with me the whole time because my knees get angry at me, right? Like, whereas if, you know, like when I was younger and I had all that tissue in there before my meniscus tears, I didn't have to listen to it. Like when stuff was clicking and popping, like, ah, whatever. When something gets hurt in my knee now, I feel it. And a lot of times I have to take, like if something gets tweaked a little bit, I take a couple days off, I take a week off, I take however long it takes to take off to help out, to, to let it heal up. When I train throughout the week. I do my prehab rehab exercises that I did when I was getting back from the surgery. I do them like three times a week regardless of whether or not I need to do them. I do them as a preventative measure because they seem to help. I notice that when I do all my strengthening exercises and I stretch properly, my knees don't hurt at all. When I get lazy with them and I stop stretching like I'm supposed to and I stop doing the strengthening exercises like I'm supposed to, they get angry at me. So. In a way, it's negative because obviously, you know, there's going to be some issues with it down the road because if they start to remove tissue out, you're going to, it's going to lead to earlier arthritis, right? We're all going to probably be arthritic, but eventually, you know, um, but it's going to do it earlier. But the one benefit is, is that it's, when you think of a meniscus tear on like sort of the, 
the seriousness of, of surgeries, it's kind of low down there. It's not like a super serious surgery. It's pretty minor, right? And it's made me way more in tune with my body and made me listen to what my body's telling me, right? So for instance, as an example, my shoulder's a little pinched right now and it's kind of making my neck feel funny, right? It's just a pinched trap up there. Now, younger me would have been like, ah, screw it, right? I, I'm gonna keep training hard, I'm gonna keep going. I got progress to, to, to achieve. Two surgeries later, Chewy, right, says, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm gonna rest and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some strengthening exercises here. I'm gonna figure out how to fix this problem because my body's telling me something. It's saying, hey, dummy, like, something's going on back here. We're telling you, fix it. So I'm gonna do my mobility work. I'm gonna do some strengthening. I'm gonna figure out how to fix it. See, you see Eugene if need be. Uh, my, my buddy, the jiu-jitsu therapist, I'm gonna fix it before I continue to proceed. Right, and the progress will be there. It's not going anywhere because I, I say progress because that's what we're all after. We're all trying to get better, right? And so it makes me listen to my body a little bit more. And my neck, my lower back, those things are far more serious than like a little piece of cartilage. And so I share this with you today that you know, again, not much has changed for me, but it's made me much more aware of my body. It's made me listen to it a little bit more, and that honestly has been a beneficial thing. So for you guys getting ready to have a meniscus surgery, it's probably going to be fine, but try to take that lesson away from it. If you had a similar situation that to, to Chris and I, if you're body was telling you stuff along the way and you didn't listen and eventually got worse and tore, then take that lesson away, right? Don't just let it go to waste. Learn from it and say, you know what? When stuff starts to get angry on me elsewhere, be, be mindful of it and listen to your body. It's trying to help you out. It's trying to tell you things. You know, again, do what's necessary. Talk to someone that's a professional that can help you address the problem, get it fixed, and then continue on. So, Chris, hope this helps, brother. Thank you so much for the question. 